So let me walk you through the entire enterprise architect career path. The objective or the basic goal of becoming an enterprise architect is simply so that you have the skills, knowledge, and abilities to create a complete design of the enterprise. So if you love technology, you're passionate about technology, you're highly analytical, you are a leader, this position or being an enterprise architect is extremely rewarding. So let's jump right in, take a look at our first step, which is understanding and implementing an effective organizational design for the high performance enterprise. Now what this means is that you need to evaluate the existing infrastructure or the organization design, be it the traditional design, the contemporary design, or whether the organization is following the flexible design methodology, agile design methodology, and so forth. So you as an enterprise architect would have a solid understanding and not only just the understanding, but in fact, implementing the design and creating the design itself. So we're gonna learn everything about organizational design as step one. Once you master this part down, let's move to step two, which is getting deeper into the TOGAF and the architecture development method. So using tools such as Archi4, Visual Paradigm, and these are hands-on tools that I'm gonna demonstrate how you can in fact take the current state of the organization as well as where the organization wishes to be, which is the future state, and then design a complete path. Not only just the path itself, but the business processes, the workflows, the flowchart, and what needs to be done at each step. So this is a fairly large framework. So for the purpose of this course, obviously I'm not gonna focus strictly on just TOGAF ADM, but I'm gonna give you a solid understanding as well as hands-on by using several tools so you as an enterprise architect can practice and then effectively work with the TOGAF ADM framework. Step three is the big one, project management. You as a project manager needs to be an effective project manager, and not only just an effective project manager, but you need to be able to understand the entire project lifecycle. What happens at phase one? What happens as when the requirements are gathered? What happens when you talk to a business analyst? What happens when you talk to the developer team, the actual solutions architect team, and so forth? So all of the phases of the project lifecycle, you must have a solid understanding and know-how of how to become an effective project manager. So step three, you will master within this course, this career path moving forward. So once you understand and learn all of the effective techniques of project manager, which includes by the way, collaboration with stakeholders, team meetings, and all of the rest of the areas that I'm gonna talk about in this course, so you can really learn to be an effective project manager. Step four is yet another important area. Here we're gonna learn of the core methodologies, frameworks, principles of DevOps, which is development and operations, because modern organizations, not only they're moving to cloud, but they're trying to implement the DevOps philosophy, right? The DevOps culture. So I'm gonna focus on people, process, and technology, which typically, by the way, is technology being implemented first, and then we talk about the business processes, workflows, and then of course the end user comes into play and then we train that user. Well, this is gonna be the other way around, right? It should be the other way around. So I'm gonna focus strictly on different methodologies. Again, DevOps in depth. I'm gonna talk about the ITIL four frameworks in depth, Agile, and then Lean Six Sigma. How do you eliminate all of the waste processes, the business processes or redundant processes? So uh, fairly in-depth is step four, once you effectively master the DevOps, Cycle 4, Agile, and Lean Six Sigma. Then of course, step five, which is the cloud platform itself. Now this could be AWS, this could be Google Cloud, this could be Azure, this could be Red Hat OpenShift. All of these are okay. And then if you're comfortable with any one of the other ones, perfect, go for it. But I'm gonna cover in this course and give you a solid understanding, hands-on of the AWS ecosystem 
so that you can actually get certified as well. So it's good to have uh, one or two, maybe three certifications, whether you wish to get certified within AWS or DevOps or ITIL 4 or even Tor Gap. So it's really up to you because uh, this is a broader perspective and you need to take a look at and evaluate your own skills. Of course, you can always reach out to me for further guidance or assistance. I'll be happy to answer your questions. So step five is really understanding the platform itself and then implementing all of what you've learned as an enterprise architect, right? All of the frameworks, all of the uh, implementations, all of the concept. This is where you can really implement hands-on by taking a look at how these companies, how the enterprise organizations are actually implementing all of these areas. So I hope this helps. Just wanted to cover briefly what the entire career path is, what our journey going to be. Now, of course, this is a fairly large course, so I welcome your feedback along the way. If you have any questions, let me know. If you need me to create some additional topics or you need some more clarification, just reach out. I'll be more than happy to do it. My goal is so that you can become an enterprise architect by the end of this course. And if you're already an experienced individual, perfect. You will definitely learn some of the missing parts, right, or some of the areas that you feel you need to master once again, maybe as a refresher or learn some of the new areas that I'm gonna talk about throughout this learning journey. So I welcome you once again to this course. I'm super excited to dive right in. My team, Claydesk, is super excited to dive right in with you. And with this, let's move to the next lesson.